So members of the first and second estate to save their skin agree to give the third estate a little something. What is that little something? Well, um, one, they declare an end to the feudal regime in France, which means that they get rid of the special tax privileges that the first and second estate enjoyed. Um, they allow individuals from the third estate to enter important government positions, which means that talent instead of the family you are born into is a foundation for uh, political success. Um, a lot of the ideals of the Enlightenment inform these. And three weeks later, um, by the end of August, think about how quickly this is progressing. So this all started in June, and then you've got riots and craziness, and by August, things change. By the end of August, they create a preamble to a new constitution, and it's called the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen. And in many ways, you can see connections to the American Declaration, one that you're much more familiar with. This Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen says things like men are born and remain free and equal in rights. This Declaration grants a whole variety of freedoms to individuals, freedom of religion, right? Think Voltaire. Freedom of the press. The government can't censor what you are saying. Freedom, um, or actually rather equality in taxation. Equality before the law. It establishes a principle of national sovereignty. Who's in charge of the country? The people themselves. The king gets his authority from the nation. So one of the things that's important to remember is that this doesn't get rid of the king. King's still there. But instead, it is a slight change that benefits everyone. But there are some dilemmas created by this. Are women equal to men? Right? The language used is men. What about free blacks in French colonies in places like the Caribbean? Slavery goes on there. How can the French justify slavery? Does religious toleration of people like Protestants and Jews give them equal political rights and allow them to serve in office? Those questions, especially related to people in the colonies, are going to very much inform the end of this lecture related to um, the Haitian Revolution. Reading this, women especially are adamant that they receive more rights. They do things like march to the Capitol, write petitions, public pamphlet, publish pamphlets, organize political clubs. Um, and actually, when Louis refuses to sign this document, because he's still head in the clouds, unable to recognize that things need to change, it's actually a group of women, you saw this in the textbook, who march to the Capitol and in a huge crowd, basically force the king to come out of his hiding and bring him to Paris where he can be held accountable to everyone else. So that's known as the March to Versailles. Um, we've got a new document, but we've still got a king.